Hey everyone, Coach Investor back to another video for today. So let's talk about Pinterest. At the time of making this video, the stock is down around 12 to 13%. Of course, the market is still not open when I'm filming this video, so things can change extremely fast, as we've seen with Intel and Amazon. Now, the stock's reaction after an earnings report is released is irrelevant, right? Because sometimes the report can be bad, the stock is up, report can be good, stock is down. Now, we've covered Intel and Amazon as well on this channel. If you missed that video, it's going to be in the top right corner. And the story there was the opposite. Amazon was first up, now it's down. Intel was first down, now it's up. So don't let the stock price reaction fool you. Now, in this video with Pinterest, the main reason why the stock is down so much is basically because of guidance, because of Q2, growth, and especially growth when it comes to the expenses. Now, to me, the overall report was okay, was good enough. Their comments during the earnings call, to me, says that we're going to see a Pinterest that is much better than the one we've seen in the last couple of years, especially when it comes to ads and shoppable pins. Now, shopping on the platform has been extremely important to me because, well, as we've seen from the statistics, from the reports, people come on Pinterest, people come to Pinterest because they intend to buy something. They come there for inspiration. And usually when you come for inspiration, that means that you're going to maybe rebuild the room, rebuild the house, have a wedding, birthday, etc. So you need inspiration. And usually you're going to buy stuff for that event. Now, before you went on Pinterest, you got inspired, but then you went on another website and bought your things. Now that shopping becomes something that is seamless or close to seamless on this platform, things will become much better for Pinterest and the underlying business and the financials as well. Now, first, I want to start with a comment from the CEO. He says here, I'm proud of how our team is continuing to execute. In Q1, we grew our business globally through improved content relevance, shoppability, and by delivering strong results for our advertisers. Today, we're taking meaningful steps towards expanding our ads business by opening up third-party ad demand on Pinterest, which I think was a question a quarter or two ago. And they're starting with Amazon as their first partner, which obviously is a big deal. I'll add a bit more context to that in just a second. Looking forward, we are excited to further leverage and satisfy the strong commercial intent of our users and deliver long-term shareholder value. Now, with regards to Amazon as their first partner, they did mention during the earnings call that this is Amazon ads. And so this is bringing ads from brands and other products that are leveraging the Amazon ad platform. That Amazon ad platform, one of the things that we're quite excited about is that it does also bring great buying experiences. And those buying experiences can include things for other brands and retailers. So it's not Amazon as a retailer, it's Amazon, the ads platform. And as we've seen from the earnings report, Amazon advertising business is doing quite well. Now, before I continue and jump into this earnings report, I would really appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you have not. We're trying to reach 30,000 subscribers by the end of this year. Thank you very much. And if you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment to get the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to fool.com forward slash couch investor. All right, so let's first start with a couple of extra information here. So we continue here on this great trend that Gen Z was the fastest growing demographic on the platform and grew double digits year over year. Video content grew nearly 40% sequentially, accelerating from the 30% sequential growth from last quarter. And they say here that they noted that click-through rates and saves of shoppable pins grew over 35% year over year, driven by our efforts in increasing the relevancy and distribution of our shoppable content. In the last six months, we've seen nearly a 30% increase in attributed checkouts for merchants who uploaded their catalogs to the platform. By the way, I will be trying this out with my own uh, Shopify store. So let's see if the results are good. Then they say here that shopping ads revenue driven by our mobile deep linking product grew over 40% year over year. So now you can clearly see already that, well, the direction they want to go to, the, their goal of making every pin basically on Pinterest shoppable. I mean, the results speak for themselves, pretty positive as of now, but still a long way to go. They also did say that Gen Z is the largest contributor of engagement growth. So to put it very pointedly, they are winning with a Gen Z, which again was a question, was a big question one year ago, whether or not they could attract Gen Z on the platform. 
Now, let's talk about the actual numbers here. So revenue grew 5% year over year. So globally 5%, 3% US and Canada, 6% Europe. And then the big increase here was rest of the world, 38%. But then again, we know that rest of the world, when you talk about monetization, isn't really that great. We're going to talk about that a bit later on. Monthly active users continues to grow here 7% year over year. So 1% in the United States and Canada, 7% in Europe, 9% rest of the world. And then of course, ARPU. So globally, ARPU decreased 1%, well, weak advertising environment, etc., etc. We've talked about that a lot in recent videos. US and Canada grew 3%, Europe 2%, and rest of the world 27%. But as you can clearly see here, it's basically just only 10 cents. You compare that to the rest, is not really that meaningful. Now, they did talk about the opportunity of growing internationally when it comes to advertising. This is certainly something that they will be working on this year. Now, as for expenses, this is something that obviously the market did not really enjoy that much for this quarter, next quarter as well. So overall cost of revenue as a percentage of revenue is 28%, big increase from Q4, a bit more than the rest of the quarters last year. R&D, same story there. Sales and marketing were still at 30%. So yeah, nothing has changed there. GNA remains flat overall. But when we look at guidance, and that was basically maybe the biggest issue that the market had, so they say that Q2 is their seasonally softest quarter as people tend to travel and spend more time outside starting in June. This seasonality is particularly pronounced for us as we measure monthly active users on a 30-day look back from the last day in June. Now, continue on that, they expect their Q2 operating expenses to grow low teens percentage points quarter over quarter, partially due to shifting some investments from Q1 to Q2. As a reminder, their OPEX outlook does not include the cost of revenue. Now, a bit more context on this. They say here, they know the guide suggests that they'll see a step up in sequential expenses. A lot of that is timing around a couple of marketing programs and other investments that we're making. But we would not expect to see that continue to grow in absolute dollar terms. And certainly as a percentage of revenue, we would expect to see that decelerate dramatically over the course of especially the back half of the year. And these comments shouldn't really surprise you since they promised us margin expansion this year. Now talking about margin expansion, let's talk here about adjusted EBITDA and adjusted EBITDA margin, of course. It's down, we're now just at 4%. Adjusted EBITDA is also down 65% year over year to $27 million. So to me, it's pretty clear with Pinterest, great platform, we're clearly seeing some improvements and we're clearly finally seeing the effects of shopping. Now, of course, the timing is not optimal right now, seeing that the overall ad market is a bit weak. And especially if you listen and look at the results for Snapchat, you think that this is a disaster. But as we've seen with Meta, some companies, some good companies can actually produce some good results. We've seen it with Meta, with Amazon as well. And I think we're going to see the same thing with the trade desk. So for Pinterest right now, to me, yes, the current state of the advertising market right now is a headwind but they're building the underlying platform. They're building this shoppable experience, shoppable experience, shoppable experience that will all turn into a tailwind once the advertising market turns. I believe this might happen in the back half of this year. If not, certainly 2024, we might see a huge, huge boost to the underlying business for Pinterest. But I'm very, very happy to see the progress in advertising and in shopping on the platform. Of course, the partnership with Amazon ads is already a big boost. And this is just one of the many partnerships that we will see in the future. Now, of course, those are just my thoughts. What do you think about this quarter? Let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.